most powerful rocket ever made isn't built in a lab. It's welded by hand in a dusty corner of Texas. And the way SpaceX builds it? That's the real story. Let's go inside the most ambitious rocket factory on Earth and see how Starship is built. Why is SpaceX building Starship? Because Elon Musk and his team aren't just building a rocket. They're building a transport system for Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. Starship is designed to launch 100 plus tons of cargo and people into space, refuel in orbit, and land on another planet. Then, do it all again. Unlike most rockets that are single use, Starship is fully reusable. And that makes it a total game changer. It also explains why it's being made like no other rocket before it. At SpaceX Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas, they're aiming to mass produce Starships the way you would build commercial aircraft or even cars – rapidly, efficiently, and at scale. Now, let's break down how this massive vehicle is made – from raw steel to the launch pad. It starts with giant coils of cold-rolled 304L stainless steel, a material chosen for its strength-to-weight ratio, heat resistance, and low cost. These steel coils are flattened and cut to precise dimensions, then rolled into 9-meter wide cylinders known as rings. Each ring forms a horizontal section of the rocket's fuselage. But forming the rings is only the beginning. The real complexity comes in the welding. Early Starship prototypes had visibly rough and uneven welds. Engineers used gas tungsten arc welding which, while precise, was labor-intensive, time-consuming, and prone to inconsistencies at scale. Constantly iterating, SpaceX transitioned to advanced techniques like friction stir welding and automated TIG welding. These allowed deeper penetration and smoother finishes. Today, they're using high-powered laser welding, a cleaner, faster method that delivers deep, uniform penetration in a single pass. It reduces heat distortion and creates stronger, cleaner seams. To ensure each weld can handle the stress of launch and re-entry, SpaceX runs rigorous quality control, ultrasonic testing, X-ray scans, and pressure testing for every welded joint. Their goal is to create welds that are not just strong, but nearly invisible. With each new iteration of Starship, the seams have become cleaner, the tolerance is tighter, and that much closer to a mirror finish. Multiple rings are then stacked vertically using robotic cranes to form Starship's two main propellant tanks. The upper tank stores liquid oxygen, and the lower one stores liquid methane. Between them, a common bulkhead. A giant stainless steel dome serves as a barrier. It must withstand extreme pressure differentials while minimizing weight. Each dome is crafted from curved gores, pie-sliced shaped panels that are welded together and then joined to the ring structure. This dome welding is another major challenge, requiring robotic precision and heat control to prevent warping or cracking under pressure. The rocket's nose cone is another feat of engineering. Built in tall, rotating jigs called turntables, each segment is shaped from stainless steel sheets and welded into a pointed cone. The nose cone houses the payload, satellites, cargo, or eventually, crew. For crewed missions, the nose will include life support systems, radiation shielding, and data systems. Externally, Engineers attach aerodynamic flaps. These massive movable fins guide Starship during re-entry, allowing it to perform its famous belly flop maneuver, slowing down through atmospheric drag before flipping upright for landing. The flaps are powered by hydraulic actuators and constructed with internal supports strong enough to withstand supersonic descent forces. Like the rest of Starship, they're made from stainless steel, heat-resistant and rugged. Externally, engineers attach aerodynamic flaps, one pair at the top of the nose cone and another near the base. These massive movable fins aren't just for steering, 
They are essential to how Starship re-enters Earth's atmosphere. Instead of coming down nose first like traditional rockets, Starship descends belly first. The flaps dynamically adjust during descent to control drag and orientation, almost like how skydivers use their limbs to steer. The flaps are powered by hydraulic actuators and constructed with internal titanium supports wrapped in heat-resistant stainless steel exteriors. This design allows them to handle the intense aerodynamic forces of supersonic flight and the searing temperatures of re-entry. The flaps are constantly repositioned in real time to keep Starship stable as it falls through the atmosphere. Then, just before landing, the lower flaps adjust, the engines reignite, and the entire rocket flips upright for a vertical touchdown, a maneuver no other spacecraft has attempted at this scale. To survive atmospheric re-entry, Starship needs protection. Hundreds of hexagonal ceramic tiles, inspired by the space shuttle but vastly improved, are applied to the windward side. Each tile is slightly different in shape to conform to the curves of the ship. They're made of a lightweight, heat-resistant material and labeled like a puzzle. Robots handle bulk application of these tiles, but many are still fitted by hand. Each tile must be flexible enough to expand with heat and remain firmly attached during re-entry. SpaceX has tested different adhesives and mounting brackets over dozens of prototypes to ensure durability. The powerful Raptor engines are what propel Starship to other worlds. The Starship Upper Stage is currently equipped with six Raptor engines, three sea-level optimized Raptors for atmospheric flight and landing, three vacuum-optimized Raptors for efficiency in space. Meanwhile, the Super Heavy Booster, the first stage, carries up to 33 Raptor engines, all sea-level optimized. So, in total, a fully stacked Starship plus Super Heavy system has up to 39 Raptor engines. These advanced engines use a full-flow staged combustion cycle, a rare and complex design that burns methane and liquid oxygen more efficiently than traditional engines. These fuels can be sourced from Mars, allowing refueling on other planets. That's a pretty forward-thinking strategy. Each engine is made from high-performance alloys machined to exact tolerances. They include dual pre-burners, turbo pumps, regenerative cooling channels, and a flexible gimbal mount to steer the rocket. Engines are assembled and hot-fired at SpaceX's McGregor, Texas facility, then shipped to Starbase for integration. After fabrication, Starship is stacked atop the Super Heavy booster. Together, they form a two-stage rocket nearly 400 feet tall, which is taller than a 40-story building. To assemble them, SpaceX uses a massive tower at Starbase equipped with robotic arms dubbed Mechazilla. These arms not only stack the stages, but are designed to catch them during landing, a key part of making the system rapidly reusable. Inside the rocket, engineers install avionics, battery systems, plumbing, and flight control wiring. Every part is modular. If something breaks, it can be swapped quickly. The entire assembly process, from rolled steel to a stacked rocket, is constantly evolving. SpaceX refines it with each iteration, pushing toward mass production. So what makes this process different from NASA or Boeing? SpaceX moves fast. Their entire engineering culture is built around rapid iteration, a philosophy famously summed up by Elon Musk, fail fast, learn faster. It's not about avoiding failure. It's about pushing boundaries until something breaks and then building it better. Early prototypes like Starhopper and SN1 exploded on test stands. SN3 crumpled under pressure. SN4 burst at the flames during a static fire. And all of it was intentional. Each failure was a data point. Instead of spending years perfecting designs in simulations, SpaceX builds real hardware, runs real tests, and learns from real outcomes. That mindset doesn't just apply to the rocket, it applies to the factory. Because at SpaceX, the factory 
is the product. SpaceX tests most of this innovation in the open. Starbase isn't a closed-door lab. It's a live prototyping site where massive rocket segments are hoisted, tested, and sometimes blown apart, all with cameras rolling and the public watching. There's no secrecy, just progress. And because they own the entire process, design, manufacturing, testing, and launch, they don't wait for permission to innovate. They just do it. In that way, SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're building a new industrial model for how to make anything ambitious. Let's talk scale. Fully stacked, Starship and its super heavy booster tower 394 feet. That's taller than the Statue of Liberty and the Saturn V rocket that took astronauts to the moon. At launch, it produces over 16 million pounds of thrust, nearly twice the firepower of Saturn V. It's the most powerful rocket ever built. And it's not just lifting small satellites. It's designed to carry up to 150 metric tons of cargo or, in a different configuration, up to 100 passengers on long-duration space flights. That's not a payload. That's a small town. But SpaceX isn't trying to build a record-breaking rocket just for the headlines. The goal is something bigger. Routine access to space. A starship that could be launched, landed, refueled, and launched again, all within hours, not months. Think of it this way. Traditional rockets are like throwing away an airplane after every flight. Starship wants to turn rocketry into air travel. Fast, reliable, repeatable. The Falcon 9 already made the first stage reusable, but Starship takes it further. Both the upper and lower stages are built to land. The booster uses grid fins to steer itself back to the launch pad, where it's caught mid-air by giant mechanical arms known as Mechazilla. The upper stage re-enters belly first, slows itself down with the drag, and then flips upright to land on its tail. It sounds like science fiction, but it's already happened. Why does this matter? Because bringing the cost of launch down changes everything. The price tag SpaceX is aiming for? Around $2 million per launch. Now that's not pocket change, but compared to the 100 to 300 million of traditional heavy rockets, it's a revolution. If that cost drops low enough, launching satellites becomes affordable for small companies. Space stations can be built in orbit without breaking budgets. Moon missions move from rare events to routine flights. And yes, Mars starts to feel like a destination, not just a dream. That's not a fantasy. NASA has already tapped the Starship for future Artemis missions to return humans to the moon. And the architecture could support orbital refueling, space-based construction, even asteroid mining. Starship's impact isn't just vertical, it's horizontal, across industries. The manufacturing tech being pioneered here, in welding materials, robotics, and software, is bleeding into aerospace, automotive, energy, and beyond. And for an entire generation of engineers, Starship has become more than a rocket. It's proof that massive, world-changing machines can still be built, not in theory, but in reality. Right now, Starship is still in its testing phase, but each test flight gets them closer. Soon, Starship hopes to achieve full orbital flight, land and reuse both stages, launch payloads for NASA and Starlink, begin lunar missions for Artemis, and then the ultimate mission, prepare for Mars. As Starship becomes more reliable, SpaceX plans to launch hundreds of them. The vision is a fleet, not a rocket. Starship is still in development, but the decision is clear. Make space travel affordable. Build rockets like factories build cars. Make Mars a destination, not a dream. And it all starts with steel rings, giant welds, and a desert in Texas. What would you build if a launch cost next to nothing? Let us know in the comments and hit the like and subscribe button. See you next time on Industrial Craft.